In uh, this video, I will give you a short run through of the user interface of uh, City Engine. So, um, if we'll um, skip over to City Engine, and yeah, so in the up and running video, we created some roads and some building blocks. The user interface of um, City Engine basically consists of a series of window panes. So we have both different content in. At the moment, my inspector tab is in its pane for itself, but it can be moved. So I can drag it across and dump it in my navigator pane if I want. I can drag it out again and drop it next to my windows. So depending on how, what you're doing, where you are in the process, you have um, different possibilities. Um, the main tabs is the inspector. So the inspector tells you something about the selected object and what you can do with it. So if I ensure that I have the selection tool, so this one here, I can select one of my objects here so it's displayed that it is down in my road because it is really what has happened is that it selected a block so somewhere there should be a shape here so this is the one that has been selected so that lot we have here um and that has been generated on top of my elements we did before this element has some properties which displays in the inspector window. So it has a eave height and a ridge height. Um, in uh, this case, they are the same because the roof is flat. Um, this is clearly too tall, so I can reduce the size of this building uh, to something more appropriate. I um, it has a usage, so this basically controls what it looks like. So if I wanted to have it as a, a educational, you can see it will change the, the way that it looks. So that basically just controls the exterior or how it's textured. Um, the roof again is a flat at the moment. So these are different uh, so if I wanted to have it as a hip roof, then in that case, I should probably increase my, uh, probably not as much. So let's say uh, something like this. So I can decide on the rooftop, um, how that's going to look. So these are all properties of this model that has been generated. It's important to understand that this is just a, um, it's taken these parameters and then has and added a bit of randomness. So if I, um, if I go up here, this um, switch strange thing means that I want to generate, I want to assign some new randomness. So you can see that it's still keeping the same transport. So we have these large first floor, um, but it's generating random buildings within that. The generate tool will generate it, but it will look exactly the same. So I can have deleted the model and ask it to regenerate. And it will come up as it is now, because I it's only if I update the random seed that it will change its type. So there are different elements that we can work with, um, such as reporting, which is relevant for doing scenario modeling and things like that. We'll cover that later. So we have basically some parameters. So in our inspector, describes the individual object that is selected, its parameters, so its rooftop, whatever which parameters are available here are managed by the rule up here so in this rule file we loaded 
in the up and running video we uh load we we specify this rule file and it has a generate rule and that exposes these parameters for our object so all of these they come from the rule that we specify that's the whole concept of a city engine that we have rules and then they are applied to objects or shapes to be more specific and um, then they are generated models from that the other key interface elements to understand so this was the inspector window this was something like the i tool in Google's and arcgis we have the navigator which navigates our content so we have our shape, our scene, and I also think we have some uh, some some basic maps, these uh, underlying maps we have here. We have our scene tab. Um, I don't know, let's stay, if we stay down in, in, in our navigator, we also have, so this is what is on my local computer. So this is matter of fact, this is my what is called the default workspace. So it's specified up in the file menu. It is a workspace and I can switch to a new workspace. But this file is a file on your computer. So down in your document folders, there is a file called City Engine. And in that City Engine, there is a default workspace. If you create all workspaces, probably shouldn't they will be here and in here you can see i have my some settings i have this project i've started I have the israelib so if i want to to um, have a copy of all i've i've done i can keep this i can just basically copy my default workspace there's a tool for doing a compressed version which is probably better um, I can also delete this if I'm finished working with, with City Engine. Don't need anything. I can just delete this entire folder here and get rid of all of the things I've done in uh, City Engine. And that's probably the main use of it. Um, so that's the workspace. And that, that basically means that all the data that you're going to use has to reside in this folder in some order. You can either have it copied in here or it can be linked to creating a type of shortcut to it. So, but it has to somehow have a representation in here because when you start navigating, looking for data, you can only navigate inside this workspace. So understanding that this is a folder in your document is important element. We have our basic, first these are our navigational tools in our view so i can um, this one my, my select tool so i can use to select objects the focus this will frame on it will zoom in on the selected object we have a pan tool we have a dolly tool so we can basically zoom in and out and we have a orbit tool so we can orbit our object so those are the basic navigational tools the scene tool is somewhat like the layers tool in ArcGIS and QGIS so this decides which or shows which data you have loaded into this scene um, some of the data only exists or most of the data only exists within the scene um so in that way it's somewhat like in uh QGIS as temporary layers things that are stored inside the scene and only stored there you can't find the file for this in um, the file manager here we have our road network so turn this one off my road net consists of a network um but i'll cover all of these different elements in a video where i talk about the objects that consists of um, or are used to build um, cities in city engines but these are all basically what we have in our scene 
there's this plus which gives you ability to create scenarios so visual comparison of um, different design decisions we will also cover that later so that was the scene tool or tab we have talked about the, these tools are for moving objects also first really relevant when we have some more objects to work with these tools are for working with our world network so drawing by hand drawing by click modifying we'll also cover those in a moment uh, or in another video these are for creating your own shapes um, doing mass modeling we will look also at those and these over here are for doing measurements and changing the lighting of this, the background so if you want something else than that blue sky that is changeable in here and how the lighting is and so on some really useful things to understand are these tools so you're going to have the first one is the bookmarks so you can uh, you can uh, create a bookmark uh, so this one so it, you can always return to that bookmark so if you have a nice view of your data you can have that as a bookmark you can also save it as a high resolution screenshot so not just taking a screenshot but you can here control the resolution of your screenshot so increase that if you want a higher resolution you can um, here decide on the camera in which you're looking for so more different objectives of your camera so besides the perspective of your view you can um, decide on how it's displayed so if it's textured or just shaded sometimes if you have very complicated models it might be um, nice to change that to a more simple view you can uh, this online or on camera light might seem a bit silly but it's really useful um, if I navigate oops um, to the back of my buildings they say they can be a bit difficult to see because they are in the shadow here here if I um, turn on camera light I can also see in um, in the shadow so that's that it can be a useful feature because sometimes you're wondering why is this so difficult to see it's basically because you're on the shadow side of something um, additional elements um, the grid so you might want to get rid of I often have this uh, information display so basically giving me information and here you can see how many objects I've got and where I'm uh, located that can be useful and i think this is about it for now in this area this element decides on which type of of geometry is the displayed we'll cover that when we talk about the different type of elements and finally we have different views so uh, a view so i can have a top view and 3d view these things are controlled from the window so up here i can choose a new viewport and i can have a front view change to that and i can focus frame my f2 so i can these can't be you can't rotate or or pan these you can pan them but you can't you can't orbit them and we do that in 3d these can be uh, side by side if you want you can drag them over so you have them um, something like that so you can have different views sometimes it's useful to be able to select objects in one view rather than in another so you can have your views as you want um, you can also close these and minimize them um, and they'll appear as small icons in the margin so bring them back there um, so these are the views from up in the window 
you can have you can create your own news so often it, it, it you can have two if you have more than the same so you want to have more than one 3d view you'll have to go up and create your own camera view up here so you have to say new view and then create a new camera view and then you can have an extra view that is also 3d so that's the views um all the rest of our specific that we will be covering in other video so the basics your navigation the modifying a object modifying a street drawing shapes generate create new random key do measurements having the inspector so that's the selected object you can change the height of it other properties that is exposed by the rule set that you specify here you have the navigation tab where you can navigate your project um, and also the accessory lib we have all the default rules and so on and you have the scenes where again here you can also turn off your elements as you seem fit so um I think that's the basics of uh, navigating. I should say that um, we are running on uh, 2019 version version one, um, waiting for the 2020 version. This one um, has some annoying things. Doesn't work on Catalina, and uh, what is the on the on the Windows? There's a, a practical. Um, shortcut that if i press down my alt key so if i am in this navigation tool and press down my alt key i can do a pan and i can do the zoom and i can do my so my orbit is my left mouse button my zoom in and out is or my dolly function is my right mouse button or my mouse wheel and if i haven't any if I, I, I have an alt key down, I can do my panning around. So that's, and that that alt key, uh, as far as I have found out, can't, hasn't any alternative uh, meaning on uh, the Mac. So you can't really, you have the, that possibility of changing everything for a key cut. You have to go up and choose the tool and then do like that in your Mac. So that's the basics of the user interface. Um, and uh, basically, um, hope to see you in other videos where I'll be talking more about the objects and how to add rules and so on. So, for another video, see you. Bye.